Hello, my global juggling community. Today, I'm going to take you through the uh, some of the moves from the WJF skill level certifications. Of course, we don't really need to go over future Olympian. Future Olympian is just six catches of three balls. You can learn that from theory and practice of juggling, but I mean, we do a demonstration of it. I mean, I should at least be able to qualify myself as a future Olympian, so let's see if I can do that. Feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, back straight, chest up, forearms parallel to the ground, elbows comfortably at my side, hands in just a bit so I can throw from the center, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Not perfect, but that qualifies as a future Olympian. Now I'm not gonna go over all of the moves, I think a lot of them you can figure out, but the first one, well, we'll go through some simple ones. So the first one is over the top, which is basically just a half shower, right? It's just one throw. So qualify the pattern. Always, most of these moves, you're gonna to wanna to qualify the pattern or we're going to require you to qualify the pattern first and then boom, over the top from one side and then boom, from the other side. So you don't have to connect them together doesn't have to be the same ball, although that would be cool. And it doesn't have to be two in a row because that would be a, a reverse cascade. Just one, and then probably qualify the pattern, and then the other side. Pick whichever side you want to start with. doesn't matter. As long as you get both sides in there, you're good. Two sets of columns. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Because you've got a four, you're going to start with a four. And that four, I mean, it doesn't have to be a four. It can be. But the thing you want to look out for is those two two balls going up at the same time, those synchronous fountain pattern throws, need to be the same height. If you do something like this, that's not gonna count. That's a different thing, we'll get into this later. That's not, and that's not even what it was. Anyway, so you can either, if you keep the four on the same side, that's fine, that would count, but just for your own uh, balance training, I would work on being able to do it from both sides. However, for this, you could also continue crossing, all right? So you can pick a three out of this three to throw a little higher, and then that middle ball can always cross. So it's two sets. So it's one, two, and then you're out of it. That's all you need to do for that. Okay, so there's, there's a behind the back throw from one side and then from the other side. Separate, they don't have to be connected at all. This is pretty simple. I mean, the back cross throw is very difficult, but it, it's simple to understand. All right, so you qualify the pattern, and then you're gonna throw a back cross. Qualify the pattern, and then you're gonna throw a back cross. Now, what we're looking for, and I did not demonstrate that very well at all. What we're looking for is a perfectly straight back cross throw that's lined up with the opposite shoulder. You'll learn this in uh, Etudes for Juggling, the, the whole section on back crosses with balls and clubs. Back crosses need to go straight up, lined up with the opposite shoulder. So from the back, you wanna make sure that, well, now I'm teaching it. No, get the video. But all right, I'll show you. You gotta get, the, th the hand you're gonna throw with has to be underneath the opposite shoulder and then the ball, hopefully, <laughs> will pop straight up. Don't worry about that. Same thing on the other side. Now, that was not good because it went in. That went a little out. That was a little better. So, you need to work on your flexibility a little bit. You know, you need to do some of this very slowly and carefully so that you have the, the range and the flexibility to be able to make these back cross throws. Because if you have a back cross throw that goes out there like that or out like that, it's a great save, but it doesn't count. Uh, and any, any move that doesn't count invalidates the whole submission. So you really want to make sure you've mastered all of these moves. And the back crosses is one of the more difficult ones. So you really want to take a, a lot of time with just one ball, make sure not good, not good, good enough. I'd say back crosses are always just good enough, never perfect. Uh, but you don't, you don't want an angle going out. You definitely don't want it to cross you know, behind your head because eventually it'll hit your head depending on the size of your head. I go way more in depth on this on etudes for juggling. So I've already done this teaching. The reason why I did all this teaching, the reason why I did theory and practice in etudes for juggling is so that I'd never need to teach it again. Uh, at least on, on video, anyway. Individual training sessions, sure. I'll go over that all over again. Oh, under the arm throws. Under the arm. Uh, this is really just in there to, in the beginning, it's something easy that you can work on. It doesn't really build up to anything. You qualify the pattern, and then, whoop, under the arm. 
one side and then the other side. That's it. Now this eventually leads into the passing zone pretzel if you want to do that. Actually the way you start that is with an over the top. Well that's, that's how I usually start it anyway. And then you do that. So that's where the under the arm becomes useful, but that's, where, that's not part of any of the skill certifications. You don't need to learn that pattern. And we're not going to be doing like seven ball under the arms like this. We're not, so this is just probably at this level and it's, it's going to go away. So if you want to just certify yourself at a higher level, you might never need to learn how to throw it under the arm ever. And then the last thing on there is just four throws of two in each hand. Just four throws. So it's basically setting yourself up to learn four. So it's kind of just showing that you're on your way to learning four. And you just need two balls for this. You don't even need the third one. So you just get your body position right. And then one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. Now you want to be real careful. Study the even pattern guidelines in theory and practice of juggling because you want to make sure that these balls are lined up. I'll give you a, an example right now. You just don't, in most patterns, you don't want anything going outside of your shoulders and you don't want anything staying in the middle, right? And with an even pattern, you don't want anything ever in the middle. Your hands will start close to the middle but the ball will fly up right next to the side of your face, inside of the shoulder, line up with the, the middle of your shoulder and come right back down into your hand, ideally. And that's what we're gonna be looking for when we score these. So if it goes out too far, that doesn't count. If you're doing a pattern like this and you're turning around and rotating, that doesn't count because how are you gonna do that with both sides when you get to four? So really you have to stay facing forward. Even if, you're if you tilt your head a little bit, that's not good. And we probably will invalidate that uh, because of that, because otherwise you'll be doing this when you do both sides, and you don't want to you don't want to embed this tilted head thing with your form. You want to keep you basically don't do anything with your body once you get your body position set. The only thing that changes is you look up, and then you start throwing things and catching things, right? But think robot, right? Your your robot body parts have been immobilized except for the parts it needs to use to execute the juggling it's trying to execute. That's pretty much it, to execute its program. That was a lot of explaining just for two balls in one hand, but I think it was important. Yeah, you, you, you needed to know that. All right, we're moving on to, so that was, yeah, we don't need to go over nine catches of three rings, that's self-explanatory. Um, 1B, okay, four sets of 441. Let's see if I can figure out what 441 is. So from here, 441 is two fours, and then the one. So the one is handing across. Four, four, one, four, four, one, four, four, one, four, four, one. Now, just like I was talking about with two balls, you're making even number throws. Fours are even number throws. So you want the same, same placement for that. Everything inside your shoulders, side of your face. Four, four, one, four, four, one. So this will come from a qualify. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't have to be right after the qualify. You can keep going until you're comfortable to try it, but this is pretty much what it'll look like. That's four sets of it right there and then right back into a qualify. And that is your 4 4 one. All right, six catches of a reverse cascade. Now, there's something very important that you have to be, uh, you have to pay attention to. Anytime you're doing a move within a juggling pattern and then you're going to resume the basic pattern, you have got to follow through on all of the throws. You cannot cheat any one of those throws and most people cheat the last throw. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So to start, okay, this is your reverse cascade for six throws. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now a lot of times I'll see, I'll see people give up on the last throw because they're thinking of going back into the basic pattern and they're not completing what they're in the middle of. So they'll do this. They'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they'll, they'll stop following through on the final throw. It won't clear the center. They'll have to turn their body over to start the pattern because that reverse cascade, if it doesn't go all the way over, if it stops here, you still have to throw under it. The only way to get over, uh, you know, around it would be on the other side, and now you're still doing a, re a reverse cascade. So you wanna make sure one, two, three, four, five, follow through. All right, finish the final reverse cascade and then continue into a seamless transition back into the basic pattern. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to turn this way and then that will not count. Overhead throws. Now we will be using this technique for overhead throws. Elbows out to the side, not this technique. 
where you're doing this. I think you've, you've got more potential to do more moves if you've got this elbows out technique. I, I think it's also an, an easier technique. It's a more natural position for you to throw above your head uh, with. So anyway, can't do anything about it. We're sticking with that. Those are the rules. So we're doing overhead throws uh, with our elbows out. So for this, for, for WJF 1B, uh, you need to connect six of these together. Now what's really important with this, because you have to come from a qualifying run of the basic pattern and then back into a qualifying run of the basic pattern. You're not going to just start from here and stop. So you need to learn the transitional throw. And I go over all of this in Etudes for Juggling Transitions. But I'll show you right now, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you're doing a basic pattern here, you can't just go from here into overhead throws. You can, but it's going to be real forced and the timing is going to be off. So you need to make a higher transitional throw. So out of this basic pattern, you choose one throw. I'm going to choose to make a higher throw from the right hand, so I'll start the overhead throws with my left. And as this, so I'm going to throw up about that high. As that ball is in the air, I reposition my arms and my hands to get into the overhead throw position. And then I'm here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I messed that up. Let me try that again. Qualify, transitional throw, reposition, one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth one is a little higher. Doesn't have to be because it's already higher than what your basic pattern is going to be, but it gives you time to reposition your arms back down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? In all of these things, we want crisp transitions. We don't want transitions within throws. Right? Just like when you do 360s, you finish the throw, then you start the turn, then you stop turning, and then you start juggling again. You don't combine any, any of those steps. Same thing with getting into overhead throws. And then we're doing uh, three connected back crosses um, within WJ 1B. So that's going to be right, left, right, or left, right, left. Either one. Right, left, right. Those were pretty good. I'll try this and see if I show you from behind. Here's the left, right, left. Left, right, left. And with back crosses, it might help you to throw a little bit of a transitional throw, which is basically just a higher throw. So instead of, say this is your normal juggling height, to get from here behind your back and then to get that one here, it could be a little higher to give you a little more time. So I would do a slightly higher setup throw with the left hand there and then throw a back cross under that to start. So higher throw and then you've got more time and it's more comfortable and looks better. Now, like I said, we're not going over everything here. Things like one, uh, one up 180 and one up 360. Uh, if you go by the form in Etudes for Juggling, Theory and Practice of Juggling, you go through all of those, uh, you'll learn the right way to do all of these things and you'll learn what we're looking for with these. So I'm just going over some of the stuff that might not be very clear even after watching that. Uh, the exception, sometimes if I feel motivated, like the shower pattern, some things that I see wrong so much, I'm just going to go over it right now. So for the shower pattern, you want the catching hand a little bit higher than the throwing hand. So if you're doing a right-handed throw and a left-handed catch, you're going to start off with the left hand higher, and you're going to keep this, this height difference between uh, the hands. So you'll start with the right hand. So six throws, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what that should look like. If you do it out of a juggling pattern, you're going to throw one higher to start, and then as that, uh, that's the transitional throw. From there, you switch your hand position to get into the shower pattern. So qualify the pattern, one high, and then two, three, four, five, six. That first high throw, the transitional throw, also counts toward your, your total number of throws for the shower pattern. So it would start one, two, three, four, five, six and then a qualify. Okay, so now in three rings, WJF 1B, uh, there's an on and off the neck. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll show you the easiest way for me to do this. First thing, when you're, when, whenever you're doing either it's a pull down or you're putting a ring on your neck or off your neck, you don't want to be pulling it toward you. So from the side, you don't want the, the ring that you're going to put on your head to be caught out here and then pull it because here's, here's what it'll look like. You're here. With three, you have time to do it, but you don't want to be out here. You don't want this three-dimensional stuff going on with your juggling. You want everything to be kind of two-dimensional. So if you keep the rings a little bit closer to you, or even if your natural pattern is out here, throw one a little bit back, and then that one can go on your head, and then you can go back into the pattern. 
So the difference is this, that, which is unnatural, or one throw back a little, and then when it's here, you just flip it over. So from the side, it's the difference between this or this, which is much easier if you can get the ring back and then bam, right there, and then off. So that's the one on, one off. It just stays on your head where you would have normally thrown it. Okay, one over the top, same thing as we did with three balls, except with rings, anytime we say parallel to front, that means that the ring, instead of being thrown like this, is gonna be thrown like this, parallel to your body. Um, and so for the one over the top, uh, it's just the start and the end of a half shower. So you qualify the pattern. Now there's two different ways to do this. You can throw over the top, and then there's like three different ways you can catch the ring that are all acceptable. You can either catch like this, with the ring like this, you can catch underhand, or you can catch inside the ring. So here's all three of those. So here's catching on the top, which I don't recommend, that hurts a lot. Catching underhand is a little bit easier, but this is probably, this is the one that all the cool kids are doing these days, and it makes sense, catch it inside the ring. That gives you more time to catch. I think that gives you the most time to catch the ring because you're not catching up here anymore. You're catching in a more natural position. Even the underhand is a little bit better for that, but inside is probably optimal. But all three are acceptable for this. So you can go over the top. That was horrible. You can go over the top, or you can go a little lower and go behind. I think, though, at some point, you're going to want to go over the top uh, because when you get to higher numbers, there's going to be a combination of behind. You're going to be combining both of those. You're going to be behind and a little bit higher, especially when you get five rings, six rings, seven rings. Uh, the pull down. Okay, so the pull down, we get into the same thing that I was talking about with the on the neck and off the neck. You want the rings close to your head. So that you'll see when people are doing like seven rings or eight rings and they do a pull down, you'll see them generally take a step in because that's placing their head closer to where the rings are. And then they can go flap, 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 flap. Instead of pull in, pull in, pull in, which all you're gonna do is end up punching yourself in the nose. From the side, you're not gonna keep the rings out here. You can either, with three, it's a little bit easier. You can throw them back toward you and then you get into that position. That would be fine because you're intentionally changing the pattern to transition into the pull down. That's fine, that's not a mistake. A mistake would be if you're trying to juggle here and you keep on throwing too far back and you have to keep on fixing it. That's not what I'm talking about. Or I would say, I mean I am saying, you could choose a transitional throw a little higher and then step into it. You could do that. That's an intentional movement to accomplish the pull down. Either one of those is fine. We're on to WJF1C. Now here's where it gets a little tricky with sight swap notation. There is a link here though. The first move in three balls is the 6x4, 2, 0, 2, 4 asterisk. And if you click on that, you'll see a sight swap guy doing a little more flourishy movement than I would actually recommend. Apparently he can't just stay still and hold on to the ball when he's not juggling. He's just got to crank it and do something. If that were a club, he'd probably be flourishing it or something. From a juggling pattern or just from the start, it's 6x4, 4, 6x4, four, 4. So now, what's really important with this, what we're going to be looking for, is that the height separation allows you to, to throw smoothly. Like, you'll notice I'm not bouncing my body. I'm not jerking my arms up and down. The height allows me to just throw. So if that low throw is too high, you'll end up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it wrong. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you'll have to do things like that. You'll have to get it too fast. And so we're, we're going to be looking for, is this just a smooth, natural transition from one set of two to the next set of two? Or are you forcing it? Like, all right, so if they're, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it wrong convincingly. No, all right, I got to do both too high. Well, you get the idea. You just, you want the low throw low. 
You want the high throw height, but you don't want to just like, you don't want to be popping it up. The technique for throwing should be the same. There's just less follow through on the low. You know, I taught all this already in uh, etudes for juggling. So all the answers are really in there, but here's what it should look like. Wait, sorry, uh, with the four. And that four is in there at this level, just to give you some time to reset your brain, because eventually you'll be doing this, and that's where the jerking and popping is really gonna be difficult to control. But just like everything else, you want the, the crossing throw to come from the middle of your body. You want everything to stay inside your shoulders. You want the fours to be fours. They can be lower than four, so not really fours, but the, the, the direction of a four. Side of the face, inside of the shoulder, nothing outside of your body. Nothing in front of your face either. It's not easy. There's a range of acceptability, but it all lies somewhere within your body frame. Everything else in balls and rings is pretty much self-explanatory. The pull down with the pancake throw at the end. Uh, this is the easiest version of this. Eventually it'll get more difficult, but we're, we're ending with the last throw being the pancake catch. Right, left, pancake, right there. Now, it would be great if you did it like that when you didn't have to move your body. We will allow a little bit of movement for catching that pancake. That's too much though. That's way too much. 